Good afternoon and welcome to the News Now. I'm Harley Strickland here in the WTOC 24-hour newsroom. I have some top stories for you today, but I first want to thank you for streaming, whether on, it's on Facebook, WTOC.com, WTOC app, Roku, Amazon Fire, whatever it may be. We want to say thank you. And, of course, you can leave comments on our Facebook page in the comment section. Leave a question there, a comment, or if you just want to say hello, tell us all hello here at WTOC. We love to see your comments. The first story I want to bring you is out of Hampton County. The Hampton County Sheriff's deputies believe a teen is responsible for deaths of three people in Barnville. 17-year-old Tyrese Collins is charged with murder in connection to the triple homicide that occurred on March 25th. You can see a picture of Collins here on your screen. It happened on Priscilla Lane in Barnville. The three victims were Gazez Duckett, Frank Johnson Jr., and Lamika Warren. So again, that is Tyrese Collins there on your screen um, who deputies believe is responsible for those three um, deaths in Barnville. Tidy Island leaders have announced their intent to sue a contractor hired to dig a well years ago. The 4,000 foot deep well collapsed in 2016 while casing was being installed. At first officials expected a one year delay. Now, two years later, the city is gathering a case against the contractor and the engineer in charge of the project. The mayor says Tybee has until 2025 to develop a solution to increase the fresh water supply to the island. So, of course, stay with WTOC for updates on that story as they become available. Law enforcement officials have released new information about the Minnesota grandmother accused of killing two people. She is now in police custody in a resort town off the southern coast of Texas. Laura Podesta reports on what led to her capture. The U.S. Marshals say a tip led them to 56-year-old Lois Reese at a restaurant on South Padre Island, Texas. Reese was on the run, wanted for murder in two states. We look at her appearance. Uh, she looks like anybody's mother or grandmother, yet she's an absolute cold-blooded murderer. Police say she killed her husband in their Minnesota home in late March. The same day, she was spotted on surveillance video at a gas station asking for directions. Say, if you want to start heading south, would you take 35 south just to keep going on down to the next state? Reese drove nearly 1,300 miles to Florida, where police believe she befriended Pamela Hutchinson in Fort Myers Beach. Four days later, Hutchinson was found dead inside her condo. Ms. Hutchinson was targeted by the suspect due to the similarities in their appearance. Investigators say Reese then drove along the Gulf Coast with sightings in Louisiana and Texas until she was arrested Thursday, 27 miles from the Mexico border. Pamela Hutchinson's cousin spoke with CBS News about Reese's arrest. I'm sorry, I don't mean to get upset, but this is, this is a relief. This is a relief. This is the closure we need. Investigators say Reese had a gambling problem, which may have been the motive behind the murders. Laura Podesta, CBS News, New York. Well, the 10th annual Coleman Race for a Cure is this weekend, or in the morning, in downtown Savannah. Everything will start and finish in Ella Square. Here's a, here's a map of the race uh, mapped out for you on your screen. From approximately 6 a.m. to noon, the race will close portions of some roads in downtown while runners are on the street. The reopenings of the roads will be um, staggered beginning at 8.30 a.m. and will continue through the morning hours. If you're running in the race, organizers suggest carpooling or having someone drop you off. But if you have to drive, parking will be available at the Liberty Street Garage and the Robinson Garage on Montgomery Street. So again, that is a map of the route for the Coleman Race for a Cure in the morning. Um, this map and more information will be available on our website and in the app later today. So if you would like to see which streets are closed and how long, um, you can go to our website and find that this afternoon. Another big event happening in Savannah tomorrow um, in downtown also is the annual Earth Day Festival in Forsyth Park. Earth Day is an annual event celebrated worldwide, and Savannah's event is believed to be one of the largest Earth Day festivals in Georgia. The goal is to educate community members on how to do everything from growing a garden 
to proper recycling to support and protect our environment. Organizers say there's always a huge turnout for this event. The festival happens, rain or shine, and will take place from 11 in the morning until 4 tomorrow afternoon. So, looks like a fun time out there, especially with the springtime weather we're having. Don't forget, we do have weather updates on our digital newscast throughout the day. You can go and check our schedule on our WTOC.com page. You can check our schedule, see when those weather updates are coming. So, I want to check, make sure we don't have anyone saying hello to us. Someone watching all the way from Kansas. Thank you for watching. Um, hello, everyone. Angela, Teresa, Laurel, Sheila. Thank you all for watching. Someone from Brunswick, Springfield. Thank you all for watching. Um, right now, I think that's all I have for you. Don't forget to tune in to WTOC at 4 for our newscast for these stories and more. Um, be watching this afternoon. And we appreciate you watching. And for now, I'm Harley Strickland in the WTOC 24-hour newsroom.